Hi everybody. Today we're going to ask the question, is my DSLR sensor dirty? The answer is yes. It's dirty. You might not realize it, but it's dirty. It's impairing your image quality maybe a little, maybe a lot. If you can see individual specs on your images, then your DSLR is dirty to the point that it's impairing your image quality. In all probability, you've got a dirty sensor. This video is not going to talk about how to clean your sensor. So you know up front, what's outside of the scope, what this video is going to show you is how to find out if you have a dirty sensor and where that dirt is. There's a ton of YouTube videos on how to clean uh, sensors. I don't have anything to add to it, so I'm just going to show you how to find it. This is a homemade pinhole lens. It's a piece of aluminum with a tiny, tiny hole in the back of it on a plastic K-mount with a 49 millimeter filter ring gl glued onto it so it can be used as a pinhole lens with some filter effects. Uh, in, a, in a later video that I'm going to film probably tonight after this, I'll show you how to make one of these. Now, we're going to use this for reasons I'm going to demonstrate in just a minute because using a pinhole lens will make the dirt very, very apparent on your sensor. You can use a lens stop down to f22 or a smaller aperture, but the pinhole works even better. On this camera, uh, this is about a 50 millimeter pinhole on the K7, or on any, on really on anything that you do this style. The pinhole is one third of a millimeter across, and that means that the aperture is somewhere in the range of 150. To obtain the aperture, you divide the um, diameter of the opening by, I'm sorry, you, you take the focal length, this is about 50 millimeters, and divide the, amp, ap, the uh, opening aperture into that. So one third of a millimeter goes into 50 millimeters 150 times. So that's how I arrived at, at it being approximately f150. So it's a very tiny opening, and believe me, it's really going to make every single spot on the sensor show up. So the first thing I'm going to do is dismount the lens I have on there right now. I'm going to put the pinhole cap over that to protect the rear element. I'm going to find the mounting point here. Not there. There it is. Put that on. Take off the lens cap. It doesn't really matter what I say for the focal range. It's whatever because this image isn't, this is just going to be it an image to find out what the sensor dirt looks like. Now I'm going to set this to aperture priority mode so that it automatically obtains a, um, uh, a, a shutter speed based on the light coming through the pinhole. Uh, it's okay if it's a long shutter speed. Mine right now is showing a thirteenth of a second. Uh, depending on where I point it, sometimes it's faster or slower. It's about what it's going to be. You don't necessarily want your image to be perfectly in focus anyway. So I have a light up here. You can see it shining off of my hand. And I'm going to point the pinhole at the light, and then I'm going to take the exposure. And what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to see the dust on the sensor. Switch to live view so I don't have to look through the uh, actual pinhole here. Now, this is what my image looks like. It's just the light bulb itself. I'm actually going to take a few more. I want to try to get the light in each of the... If you draw an X, like a 5 on a die, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if you try to get the light centered in each of those places, you'll be able to see with all of your images all the sensor dust. So what I'm going to do after this is we're going to go back to my computer. I'm going to download these images, and we're going to look at them uh, on a screen capture so you can see exactly how much dust there is. And then we'll come back here and I'll explain to you why this is working in the way that it is. Okay, so we're back here at my computer and this is the first image that I took. Now, you can already see where I'm pointing my mouse. There's a lot of dust on my sensor. Lots. All over. We're going to scroll through the images here and you can see each time the light bulb moves it's revealing new areas with even more dust. And I take really good care of my camera. I try to keep the sensor pretty clean. I keep it out of a dusty environment. When it's not in use, it's inside of a locked, sealed, basically airtight case. 
and uh, still this dust gets on here. It gets on there from mounting and unmounting lenses using your lens zoom because that sucks air in and out of the lenses. Even actuating your shutter and mirror causes air to move around within the camera body which will change air pressures and currents and cause the um, uh, and then bring in dust and also all electronic equipment generates an ionic field which attracts dust to it so DSLRs are basically uh, devices that attract massive amounts of dust so good sensor cleaning is important and doing it in such a way that doesn't damage your sensor is also important. You can see here from these from these five samples just how incredibly dusty my sensor is. Now uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to the studio. I'm going to grab a dry erase board and I'm going to show you what's happening with the pinhole that causes the dust on the sensor to become this apparent and you will get a much better sense of how dusty your sensor is using a pinhole like this than you will with any lens stopping it down as far okay, as it goes. Okay, so we're back. So we've seen from the photos that my sensor's really dusty. I've actually cleaned it since I took those photos. It was pretty bad. Um, even, you know, worse than I've had it and I'll let it get in a long time. So why is that happening? Well, let's pretend that this represents your film sensor. We're looking at it from the side. This is as though it was a cross section, okay? Light's going to come in this way from the top. Now let's pretend that you have a little piece of dust right there, maybe another one right there. Okay, so let's say you've got two pieces of dust on your sensor. Now if you're shooting it with a lens that has an aperture, we're going to use red for the aperture. Let's say it's like 1.4. It's a really wide open aperture. What happens is the light comes in and it gets spread out really far. And so the image, that's why you have a shallow depth of field and more things out of focus is because the light's coming in and it's being spread out. Now let's say, now let's say that you've got a camera with an aperture that's much smaller. Let's say that's f22 for instance. What happens is the light comes in, we're using blue for light, go back to that light comes in and it's much more targeted and centered. It's, it's, you're only getting the sharpest light. That's why you get a deeper depth of field when you have a shallower, a smaller, um, a smaller lens opening. Now let's say that you're doing like I was, not ready for you yet light, and you're using a pinhole out like that, something really, really tiny. Well, then all of the light that's coming in is in these very narrow bands, very tightly packed. So all of the dust that's on your sensor is going to show up in great detail with a tiny, tiny aperture. That's why I use a pinhole to detect how much dust I have on my sensor. So, if this video was helpful, so if this video was helpful, you can give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. You can also subscribe using that button right down there, and you'll get to know when I release more videos about photographic and non-photographic things. Uh, also, feel free to leave me a comment, and I'm pretty good about responding to them fairly quickly. Also. Uh, if you have a suggestion for a video, let me know. And if I have the knowledge and the equipment to film that video, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching.